Today, we're going to take a look at the Ophiro Laser 2 engraving machine. Let's go. So today we're going to do something a little different on the laser live stream. I was sent an Afiro Laser 2 machine to assemble and review. And for full transparency, Afiro did send me the machine to review, but I haven't been paid anything else for the review. So what I plan to happen going forward is that I'm going to assemble and test this machine right in front of you, completely cold, and give you an honest understanding about how this laser machine is like to operate and build. Now, if you haven't heard about the Laser 2 machine, this is just a simple laser engraving machine that has a work area of 390 millimeters by 390 millimeters, which is just under 40 centimeters in the metric system. And it looks like a great entry point for people who want to explore the laser process at a cost efficient price point. If you're interested in laser engraving, but don't want to break the bank to learn and understand how this process works, this machine gives you the really nice opportunity to get your hands dirty and start creating some incredible projects. So let's head over to my work area and I'll show you what you need to do from opening up the box to get this machine up and running. Here's a box. Let's open it up. We've got the user manual. Scan. We'll put that over there. This one's here. This one's here as well. Open this up. You can see in here, we've got the power, we've got the USB. We've also got the offline controller, which is interesting. And then a reset and a power. So that's, that's the front. So this is all the hardware that comes along with this machine. That's it. That's all you've got to use to put this machine together. So you don't have to be a maker. You don't need expensive stuff. You've just got a whole bunch of screws, some cap ends. And I believe this little knob may be for the laser head itself so you can focus it. But apart from that, that's it. So let's get to it. This is the gantry for the laser unit. And we're gonna place this on top, but I just wanna make sure that I got the orientation correct, which I believe it is. So it just slots in. I'm just gonna slide this down a bit. Again, really easy. Wow, 
handy dandy little there you go fits right there so so all I'm doing now is just putting those caps on What I'm gonna show you guys now is there's a loom of cable here that's going to actually power this right here. And you can see here, it's got the connector for the stepper motor. It's got some power. And then you've got this little yellow cable right here. And that's the ground. We need to ground it to the actual machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and take that little cap off again. If we can get the right side of it. I'm gonna move it all the way to the end. So you can see that it's got enough slack. I take that cap off, and I'm actually going to place that piece just in there. I'm actually going to do it in such a way that it's all sitting nice and flush, so it's not overextended. And I'm gonna just drop that cap back on. I'm just gonna tighten that up. Again, I'm not gonna crush it, I'm just tightening it up this point just so it's not going to move anywhere. These zip ties that came with it. So I'm going to actually feed this zip tie through. There he is. Wow, it's, it's a little squeezy, but we're going to get there. And there's the first one. I'm just going to zip tie this together. Zip ties, the tools of a maker. Zip ties can save your life, I'm telling you. I'm gonna grab my pliers and just quickly take them off. And we're gonna take, go back to this cable here and we're gonna actually plug this into, this is an extension cable, I'm gonna plug this in here. And then we're going to zip tie it across. It's going to probably need to, to go all the way across. That should be it now for all the, uh, the pieces. That should be it. So this can go all the way down here, can go all the way up here. This happens to be the laser unit. 
right here. I haven't even opened it up. I haven't even taken, taken a look at it. Now, one of the things I like about this laser unit is that there's a French cleat right at the back here, which means that I can slide this straight on. If I ever want to change this laser unit, it's not going to be a very hard thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little uh, knob here, which and there's a little piece in here that's just going to help me thread it through, if I can actually see that. You guys can see that too. All right, there you go. You can see I'm just... And then literally putting this on is just sliding this on here, finding a space, and just literally... I mean, that's it. All right, so the only thing that I had to get that wasn't included was a screwdriver. Basically just, there's a little screw here that I'm just gonna undo. And I'm gonna slide this grounding cable under there. Once that's grounded, slid under there, just see if I can tighten that up again. And there you go, there's the machine, fully assembled, just checking. Connected, nothing around there. All these connected are uh, connected and ground, ground connected, connected and ground. And it's just, you can see, it's gonna move really nicely. For an engraver, you can actually get a lot of material in here, which is what something that I actually like about it. And it is quite small, it sits nicely on your desk. And to be honest with you, I went from zero to assembling this machine in probably under 30 minutes. Now this laser engraver has some really interesting options when it comes to the laser unit. As you can see, the laser unit can be taken on and off really easily, and Afuro has given three different options with this laser two unit for either cutting or engraving. So they sent me some information about some of the other units that are compatible with this machine. Now the first option is what they call the LU2-2 which I'm assuming is the Laser Unit 2 Model 2 or Laser Unit 2, uh, which is a fixed focus laser module that is great for engraving, but it really isn't too fast and is not very suitable for cutting through material. So this is really just a specialized unit for engraving. Now the second option is the LU2-4SF, and I'm assuming that the SF stands for Short Focus, which is the laser unit that they included in this laser and has quite a decent cutting ability. But really it's again suited for engraving materials and actually operates a lot faster than the original module that I introduced which is the LU2-2 module. Now the third option is the LU2-4LF which again LF I'm assuming is for long focus which can engrave but really is optimized for cutting through different materials. When I got this machine, they also talked about a fourth option, which is the LU2-10, which is marked as a 10 watt laser unit, which I kind of wish they had sent along for me to test because it is a lot closer to the laser unit that I use for my tutorials. One of the other things that I liked about this machine is that you can upgrade the machine with a third party laser unit if you wanted to and try out different types of technology as they're released to the market. And this laser unit can be easily removed or replaced. It's literally pulling out one plug and putting a grounding wire to the unit and you're ready to go. The Laser 2 unit is actually compatible with either LaserWeb or Lightburn. And since I'm an aficionado of Lightburn, I'm gonna use it immediately with this machine. Now it did take me a little bit of time to understand if this machine was operational because if you're using Lightburn, there's a little flashing red light when you first turn the machine on and it doesn't speak to Lightburn until you actually go into the software and click stop. Now, I'm assuming that Lightburn needs to stop because it's constantly trying to connect to the board and by manually stopping that process gives the opportunity to Lightburn to then send commands to the machine. This actually kept me a little bit bamboozled to begin with because I've been used to other different types of lasers the laser tube does not home, nor does it do anything automatically when you first start the machine up. So just be aware of that. It took me a little bit of digging to understand what that process was by clicking stop to get Lightburn to talk to the machine. But apart from that, everything else after that was smooth sailing. Now this laser has a lot of documentation, but looking at it from a novice point of view, 
someone with very little experience or none at all could get lost trying to work out how to use this machine. Thankfully, the online communities based around this machine and laser cutting in general came in to save the day. I actually had an issue when I was first putting together this machine and it was the online communities that were able to point me in the right direction. I did contact Author's technical department, but at the time of making this review, I'm still waiting for a reply. So thankfully, it really was the community that was able to get this machine up and running. Now, once I had the machine up and running, I decided that I'd just go and do a first test engrave on a piece of MDF and was actually really surprised at the great results I got without having to dial in the settings. I'm thinking that with the focus set so low on the laser unit and the power of the laser unit I was given to try, I got a very fast and clean engrave. I then grabbed and prepared a tile and wanted to see what the results would be if I created a laser tile. As you can see here, it was fast to set up and get the results I wanted. I was guessing the settings to use here and I think I could refine those settings even more to remove more paint from the tile. But I was incredibly surprised at how easy it was to get these results. Now, when I put together this machine, I was a little biased at the idea of how simple this machine was. And I actually thought it would be a big drawback until I realized that by having such a basic machine, the operators would have to think about each step of the laser process and what they would need to achieve instead of letting the machine take care of all those steps automatically. When I had to set focus, you had to do it manually using the screw to set the height of the laser unit using an acrylic spacer that they give you. Again, I was surprised at the results as the instructions show you a more advanced manual way to set the laser focus. And I assumed this would actually create a better result. To my surprise, I got the same result using both methods. Just be aware that this machine doesn't have any sensors on it, including no end stops. So you have to set the machine manually to the point that you would like it to start. This also means making sure that your software is set up and in Lightburn, that means using the current position option to make sure that the laser starts where you want it to. While this is great for a beginner to understand how your laser machine works, it also limits your ability to repeat a process if you wanted to run another pass after completing a job. Now this could be solved by mounting the laser to a flat surface and creating a jig to allow you to line it up and repeat the job as necessary. And while this machine has a number of built-in safety features, I definitely got the feeling that I couldn't let this machine operate by itself. I'm planning to build an enclosure around this machine and test that out further. And one of the things I'll be adding immediately is a power kill switch to the outside to make sure that the operator is in full control of the process. Like most lasers, you have the option to use a number of different materials with the Author Laser 2. And I was curious to see how it would cut through some 3 mil laser ply given that the laser unit was calibrated for engraving. Now I used my best guess again to set the laser and I was surprised that I got the result I did in two passes, even engraving the shape I was cutting out on the baseboard underneath. Cause that's one of the features of this machine. The speed that it engraves is faster than other machines. And I look forward to testing that in future videos. Now some of the materials that the laser two can engrave and cut on are cardboard, wood, bamboo, plastic, leather, plywood, pine board, and others. If you're looking at learning all about lasers without breaking the bank, then the Author Laser 2 is a great option to get into the game. It is definitely a beginner's hobby machine, but the ability to change out the laser gives you the ability not only to use this machine as a training ground, but to upgrade it when new processes and hardware becomes available. With a little learning, you'll be able to create all sorts of items like the ones shown here before leveling up both your skill and equipment in the future.
If you're interested in getting a Laser 2 machine, I'll leave a link below in the comments right here, as well as a link to the official author online community so you can look around and see some of the projects that have been made with this machine. And as always, you can always join the Laser Livestream Facebook group to see what I and others have made with this laser and others. I'll see you there.